Hi, I'm Sam Gwynn, and this is History in Five. I'm going to tell you five very interesting things about Stonewall Jackson. I think a lot of people in America today don't realize that Stonewall Jackson was the South's greatest hero after Robert E. Lee. Uh, he was one of the, the first great heroes of the war, and his transformation from being a sort of a mild-mannered eccentric physics professor to one of the more famous people in the war took place extremely quickly, and it took place faster than just about anybody. Jackson was famous because he engineered so many stunning military victories. He was also famous because he was struck down uh, at a young age. He was only 39 uh, when he died at the Battle of Chancellorsville during the South's greatest victory. In fact, the, the, a, a victory that he and Robert E. Lee uh, engineered together. Even while he was living, he was considered to be one of the most brilliant generals of all time. This, he was being compared to Napoleon, both in Europe and America. His Valley Campaign was an extraordinary military feat and it, it, uh, Jackson's military uh, accomplishments defined him and made him what he was. In the spring of 1862, something really extraordinary happened in the state of Virginia. An unknown general named Thomas J. Jackson, who was beginning to be known by the name of Stonewall, took a very small army against three Union, much larger Union armies and routed and defeated them. He not only defeated them, but he, the, the way he defeated them was something that nobody had ever seen before in the war. He, uh, he conducted these marches at a speed that nobody had ever seen before. His, his army could travel faster than anybody else could. It, 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 it hid behind mountains. It popped up where no one expected it to. And he, by maneuver, basically, and tactical brilliance, he was able to take a, a very few, a relatively few men against many men, and at one point even throw a scare into Washington, D.C. And in this way, this became known as uh, Jackson's Valley Campaign, or Shenandoah Valley Campaign, and it's what made him famous. The Civil War was characterized by many famous transformations. The most famous of all was probably Ulysses S. Grant, who was working in his father's leather store a couple of months before the war started. He became president. But interestingly, and I don't think most people know this, Stonewall Jackson's transformation was faster and more dramatic than Grant's. He went from being a, a, a kind of inept, hypochondriac college physics professor to being the most famous military man in the world in 14 months. And the thing that interests me most, perhaps, about this subject, I think, is the idea of transformation. How does that happen to a man? How does it happen to a man? What does it do to a man inside? And uh, to some extent, I think that's, this is the book that, that I wanted to write. It was about how this could happen to a man. One of the most interesting things about Jackson's success was that it came in spite of a very, very unusual and eccentric personality. He was a, he, a hypochondriac at the very least. He also had a number of very real physical ailments. He was, uh, he was also a very silent man. He, he, he would not engage in even the most rudimentary kind of, kinds of, of social conversation. Uh, he would fall asleep during conversations. He would fall asleep in church. Uh, at the college that, where he taught, he would walk around with his, his hands behind his back and his head down, not, neither looking to the right or the left. He was also, though, a very, very complex in, uh, person. And uh, while, while he is famous for his military victories, Jackson was a lover of poetry and Shakespeare. He had an almost mystical uh, sense of God. He was a, a deeply religious man. He, he saw God in everything, God in every glass of water he drank. Uh, he was uh, with his wives, he was married twice, his first wife died. Behind closed doors, he was this tremendously joyous and affectionate person, even though the outside world perceived him as this stern and severe eccentric. Robert E. Lee and Thomas J. Jackson were completely opposite personalities, and yet they found each other early in the war and they found something in each other and I, I don't I suppose it was a perhaps it was a sense of of aggressiveness a, a sense of of, of wanting to uh, to uh, attack the other side or bring the war to the other side that was not shared by 
other people on, on, in the Confederacy and really not shared by very many people in the Union. And they found each other during the Shenandoah, Jackson's Shenandoah Valley campaign. And one of the things I explore in the book is this, is the relationship between Jackson and Lee and how exactly that worked because they really couldn't have been more different. And in many ways the most indelible picture of the two men is at Chancellorsville on the eve of the greatest southern victory where, where uh, Lee and Jackson ended up driving a, a Union army three times its size essentially into the Ram Rappahannock River. Um, the, the, this image of them sitting on a stump together, um, plotting out how the battle was going to go the next day. Uh, and indeed it was so famous that, the, that people later, officers and the southern officers later who happened to be around it, tried to reconstruct exactly what, it, what the two men were saying and what they were doing. <laughs>